Today we're breaking down a confusing yet crucial topic. The various forms of spondy conditions. Spondylosis, spondylitis, spondylolysis, and spondylolisthesis. Let's simplify these terms and understand their clinical relevance. The prefix spondy comes from the Greek word spondylos, meaning vertebra. So, any term starting with spondy relates to the spine, but what follows that prefix makes a world of difference. Let's decode each. First is spondylosis. This is essentially spinal degeneration, often age-related. Think of it like osteoarthritis. There is cartilage deformation and deformities. Same happens with the spine. It is commonly seen in the cervical and lumbar regions. It involves disc dehydration, osteophyte formation, and facet joint changes. And key symptoms in this condition are neck or back pain, stiffness, limited mobility. Next is the spondylitis, where itis tells us it's an inflammatory condition. It happens more on the cellular level. The most common type is ankylosing spondylitis and sacroelitis. There is gradual fusion of vertebras, stiffness associated with fever. Key symptoms seen in this are morning stiffness, stoop posture, and pain. Now spondylolysis. This one is a bony defect or a stress fracture in the pars interarticularis, most commonly in the fifth lumbar vertebra. It's often seen in young athletes involved in hyperextension sports. This also happens due to repetitive stress and overuse. Key symptoms are pain with lumbar extension movement and stiffness. And the last one is spondylolisthesis. Here, one vertebra slips forward over the one below it. It can also result from chronic spondylolysis or degenerative changes. Its grade range from 1 to 4 based on the extent of slippage. Symptoms mainly are radiating lower back pain, leg pain due to nerve compression, and postural changes. Let's quickly recap. Spondylosis equals degeneration. Spondylitis equals inflammation. Spondylolysis equals stress fracture. Spondylolysthesis equals vertebral slippage. Hope this concept was made easier and you'll be able to recall them during clinical practice. Now, as a physiotherapist, here are some mistakes you should prevent. You don't mobilize an unstable spondylolisthesis. You don't ignore inflammatory signs in spondylitis. And differential diagnosis and proper imaging can guide your protocol. Hope you liked the video. See you in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing, and stay connected.